Right, that's that two speed compressor. We've got um, these three terminals linked out and um, power onto these ones. That's the high speed connection, that's the low speed. Um, you link these out for it to run on high speed, and I think if you want to run it on low speed, you put um, power onto these as well. So, diagram on the um, on the lid. That's three contactors if you want to run it on either. Um, that's a shorting contactor which we've done basically we've we've done with that. Um, and then you put power on through that one for high speed and that one's open. So those two if it was a contactor those two would be Energized for it to run on uh, high speed, and then for low speed, that one's open, that one's open, and that one's um, energized. So, yeah, you don't put any power on there for uh, low speed. Um, for Mr. Module, wired in, live and neutral, switch wires. goes back to that little mess there which is um, as it was originally really we haven't really done we just join this in because that's an extra just put it on circuit with the LP switch um, a permanent live off of that wire neutral off of, off the fans um, and we just put the switch wires in circuit with the pressure switch We're up on a little platform. This thing's up in the air, in the roof. Screwdriver. Right, we've got a new contactor here. Oh, I've put a delay timer in there. That was. There we go. I'm just trying it out. Making sure it works. Um, I've interrupted the feed to the contactor coil from the control circuit. Um, and this is set for about four minutes. So as soon as this contactor goes off, it puts power. That's the crankcase here. Wire. That's a normally closed contact. So when this is off, this is on. That powers up the timer, which is set to count for four minutes. Um, as soon as that's powered up, it cuts the feed to the coil. So even if it went off and then wanted to come straight back on again, this will hold it off for four minutes. Um, once it's done, it f done its four minute, there we go, it's just switched. Once it's done its four minute count, it then allows, if it wants to, it can now start. So as long as it's been off for four minutes, it will start straight away. Um, but if it goes off, um, there we go. So it's connected now. So if it goes, if it's been on, it's been off for more than four minutes, and the thing needs cooling, it'll fire up straight away. But if it goes off and then wants to come back on again, it'll have to wait four minutes. So it's sort of like an anti cycle timer rather than just wire it up so it delays at the start. And then they wonder why one unit's running and one isn't. You know, so that's a, it's a bit more complicated, but I think it, it will cause less trouble. Mm. I've got a pressure test now with some nitrogen. I've got to change that dryer yet. I've got to change the liquid line dryer. And then back it out, put some gas in it, and uh, see if it works. I've just been checking the. Um, Pair we made on the condenser. I just chopped it. Mm, let me see. Yeah. I just chopped down, put inch and eight coupler, inch and eight to seven eight reducer, um, and that little bracket just to take the weight out, and then we put a vibration eliminator. And anyway, I've been going around checking all the joints for the leak stuff. The same stuff as in there, but it's, it's gone. 
no brush. And uh, look at that. I've never seen one do that sort of, well, that much. Practically the whole joint. That one's a bit better. And it's still not good. So that's going to be fun. pouring out of there. There's a little tiny bit there. Oh, on me. There. I think that might be it for that one. Is that one there? That. That one. It's terrible. I suppose we ought to check. I think they might be all right. And it's just where it's um come off the brush. Well, it's not pretty. And it's got a bit of a tit on it. That one's sealed up, and I've just had another go at this one. And that one's got two tits on it. And I think I've got that as well. A load of tiny little pinholes all the way around, so that to file all the old braids away. And then go in again. I'm back now. Um, it's held pressure overnight. So we've got a pipe clamp in there just to hold them two pipes into that um, vibration eliminator. It's got to be solid one side. So it'll work properly. Black paint over there when we fix that. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a bodge, but where I've silver soldered these up, I've put some, oh, what's it called? Super epoxy, I think it's like epoxy resin stuff you use for sealing up evaporators, like domestic fridges, just as a sort of um, belts and braces approach to it. And we've got a vacuum pump going now, so. 
if there was a pinhole that would suck that into it a bit. But um, I'm pretty sure it isn't. Like I said, we went over it all yesterday. But just to be sure. I mean, these don't look too clever either. Not pinholes in them. Uh, I think they're done in a factory, to be honest with you. But um, neither of these, the liquid, the expansion lines look like they're leaking. So uh, we we'll get the um, files put back on and some insulation put on the pipe work. Um, finish backing it out. And. Uh, Fire up.